Chaffinch is one of our most common, widespread and familiar birds. It's found anywhere year-round and is a frequent visitor to our gardens. A spring male is a striking and easy to identify beauty, with a pink face and chest, slate blue head, brown back and green rump. Females are much less brightly coloured, a more buffish grey all over, and being the same size as a house sparrow, although somewhat slimmer, females are often disregarded as sparrows. Brambling is the northern counterpart of chaffinch, found principally in Scandinavia during the breeding season, but present in the UK during October to April, and frequently feeding with the same size chaffinch. How can we pick out some of these northern visitors? Both species follow the same molt pattern, and this is important for identification. Birds molt straight after breeding, and so, in early autumn and winter, the birds have their freshest plumage. However, all the feathers have buff tips to them, meaning the birds are at their dullest in terms of plumage at this time of year. In both cases, the breeding spring finery is arrived at during the winter and spring by the process of abrasion, losing those buff feather tips to reveal the bright colours beneath. Both species become more brightly coloured as the winter season progresses. This does mean that in autumn, when the first bramblings arrive, both species are at their most drab. How can we tell them apart? Chaffinches have two consistent, distinctive features which help separate even the drabbest young females from sparrows. They have white wing markings and white outer tail feathers. When the birds are seen in flight, these wing markings show as very distinctive white wing bar and white shoulders. The tail is frequently spread, especially as the birds land, flashing the obvious white sides. From behind on the ground, the white might not be that obvious. But there is another feature, which for us, helpfully, is most obvious on the brownest and dullest individuals. Two dark stripes that run from the beak, over the crown of the head, and down the back of the neck to the plain back. It's completely different to a female house sparrow's plain head, eye stripe, and heavily streaked and barred back. All chaffinches tend from grey through buff to soft pinky tones. Brambling is always a good find. Numbers vary each year depending on availability of food nearer their breeding grounds in Europe, but they are by no means uncommon, although numbers are usually highest in eastern areas, and brambling is relatively scarce in western Scotland and Ireland. Field guides show the white rump as being the most obvious ID feature. There is no doubt that if you see the white rump, you have clinched the ID, although be aware of bullfinch, another bird with a black tail, pinkish colouring and white rump. Bullfinch are heftier, necklace finches. The pink male's and buff female's colour extends onto the belly and both sexes sport a neat black cap. In size and shape, brambling are identical to chaffinch, although close examination will reveal brambling to have a more forked tail, which appears shorter due to brambling's longer wings, but this is rarely helpful as an ID feature in the field. As with chaffinch, brambling, especially young female, at the start of autumn can be quite dull coloured. The first thing that will strike you, even on the dullest individuals, is the orange tinge to the upper chest and across the shoulders, a colour not seen on chaffinch. The wing pattern is principally the same as chaffinch, but the white is flushed with orange, and the shoulder patch in particular is suffused with orangey feathers, meaning it lacks the striking whiteness of chaffinch. The belly on all individuals is also white, with usually darker spots on the flanks, again a feature never seen on chaffinch. If seen in flight, the white rump should be obvious, and another defining feature is that there is not white outer tail feathers, so a very different distribution of white flashes to on a chaffinch. As the season advances, the buff tones are worn away, revealing an increasingly dark back, grey or black head, orange chest and white belly, with dark spotted flanks. If you are lucky enough to see a male before they depart in spring, they are stunningly beautiful birds. Chaffinch and brambling are also possible to separate on call, both being quite vocal, constantly calling to other members of their group. Chaffinch have a wide range of calls, but on the ground their most familiar is a slightly harsh metallic pink or chink, often uttered from birds happily feeding. The equivalent call of brambling is a nasal buzzing teep or teep. In flight, chaffinches have a familiar chup call lacking the harsh metallic tones of their ground-based call. It is not nasal, neither is it explosive. Rather, it is confident, bold but soft. Bramblings and flocks in flight use the same nasal teep call, but also have a soft, short call, sounding uncannily like a child's toy plastic trumpet. This can be uttered singly, 
or strung together into a short series. Chaffinches sing for much of the year. Males can be heard even on nice days in winter. The song seldom varies and is a good one to learn. To me, it reminds me of a bowler running up, gaining momentum, and then the final flourish is the ball being bowled. Brambling song is very rarely heard in the UK, except perhaps in Scotland where it does rarely breed. It is, however, a very simple, easy song, nothing at all like a chaffinch. It is a nasal, single, held note, held for about a second. It has even been likened to a distant chainsaw.